Back in the late 1800s, when the British controlled East Africa, they decided to build a railway system there. In March of 1898, they commissioned a uh, former British Army officer, John Henry Patterson, to come from India to East Africa to lay the permanent stone foundations for this bridge. And in March of 1898, he rode the train up from the coast in Mombasa to the Zavo River, where a camp of 3,000 railway workers was established to build these stone foundations. The workers had no idea about the danger they were facing. The railway crews, on the other hand, were virtually all brought into East Africa from India and in, in, East, uh, in Western India and uh, Southern Pakistan, where most of these workers originated. There were no large, dangerous carnivores that people had to protect themselves against. And so these naive workers basically set up camp in a very dangerous area without the safeguards that Native Africans routinely employ to protect themselves. It was at that time that two big man-eating lions began falling on railway crews, attacking the camps at night, pulling men screaming and kicking out of their tents, and consuming them on the edges of camp and sending terror and chaos into the heart of this carefully orchestrated uh, engineering operation. These man-eating, maneless lions that Hollywood would later name the ghost and the darkness would wreak havoc for months, killing many workers. Men became terrified. The railway crews eventually mutinied. Uh, there were threats against Patterson's life. Uh, the crews uh, left, they abandoned their work and took the train back to the coast and said, we're not going back to work until these lions are gone. These lions outwitted Patterson and everyone else who was trying to kill them for almost nine months before he was eventually successful in eliminating them. And it wasn't until December 9th, 1898, that he was eventually able to kill the first man-eater. And three weeks later, he was able to take out the second. The lions themselves have been at Chicago's Field Museum since Colonel Patterson sold them for $5,000 in 1924. The colonel, who wrote about his exploits, estimated that 135 workers were mauled to death. But modern scientific tests done on the lions put that number closer to 35. As for why the Zavo lions came to develop a taste for humans, as opposed to something like a zebra or buffalo, Patterson says, there's a simple reason. The lions kill their prey by seizing them around the neck or muzzle and suffocating them. They stab with their canine teeth and hold their large struggling prey until it uh, expires. But by inspecting the jaw of one lion, it was found he had a terrible tooth infection. Now, if a lion is unable to apply pressure to that tooth and unable to suffocate a prey, it would be a very dangerous thing to grab a buffalo because if you can't kill the buffalo, the buffalo can certainly kill you. And so we, we believe that uh, these uh, lions would have viewed the arrival of 3,000 railway workers in their territory uh, as with considerable enthusiasm as uh, this disease set in. They arrived at exactly the wrong time in the life history of this particular lion.